Hey YouTube family, I'm doing an update here. I still haven't received my main power supply for this um, bike. Due to the coronavirus, it's taken exponentially longer to get anything um, from overseas to here. And apparently, it's our country holding things up. <laughs> uh, my, my package has been in the country of origin for almost 41 days and hasn't moved. So, uh, anyhow, it's here in the States, just for whatever reason, our country is not willing to process stuff very efficiently that's coming in overseas. But either way, um, I'm certain it'll show up. But in the meantime, thank God I was able to find these LTO Honda Toshiba Skib Cells from Green Tech Auto online. And let me tell you guys, these are an amazing sell at an amazing price. Go to Green Tech Auto and look up the Skib Cell, LTO Cell, and you will not be disappointed. Um, but anyhow, let me get into the meat of this. So what these are, they're LTO Cells. They're originally out of, I believe, a Honda Fit from the 2015. I'm not sure why they have so many of these cells in stock. They either opted not to use them because the ones I've been getting look freaking brand spanking new, untouched. And if they're not brand spanking new, they are damn close. Each cell has been perfect. Um, they come perfect. They come at nominal voltage. They are balanced. I have individually checked each cell. None are with in any concerning range f distance from one another. Um, all that aside, uh, they do come as a single cake. So you get a full square. So you notice I have three of them here one two three and they're just a flat square they're two packs so that's one brick you get with those two packs now you can run them as a 32 some odd volt per side or you can run them as a 64 volt um, block that's 20 amps so so each of those were 20 amp at 64 volts and so I was running 60 amp hours at 64 volts. Now this build was intended to be at 72 volts. So it gives it a total voltage of 84 volts fully charged. And this was 20 volts off that um, top charge that this bike runs its most efficient at. And so even though I ran it, I had a whole bunch of amp hours and... Um, the bike was able to do speed limits of 55, 60 plus... Um, it just, I was only getting about 22, 23, 25 miles, um, out of this pack. And I just know that starting 20 volts off of that top charge where this build was designed to be at means I'm never running at my efficient, most efficient, um, voltage for this build. So I thought and thought and thought, and I was like, gosh, how can I get this to be better suited for what I'm doing. And so I knew I knew about parallel and I knew about running things in series, but I'd only done it on LiPo batteries that I ran in my freaking drones. I'd mix two 3S with, then make a 6S pack basically. And I'd run batteries in parallel to get longer run time in like vehicles that could accommodate more than one battery. Um, so I knew it was possible, but processing that in your head and in, in, in order of what the way they have things laid out for their build and then the, all the variables of how I could go about getting different voltages and then selecting the best one I felt possible for this. So here's what I did. So instead of running these flats as square blocks, I basically left them as is on the bike. I loosened everything up so I could get to the top of the cables and retighten stuff and loosen stuff and rewire everything. Uh, across the back of these that make these two cells that are 32 volt into 64 volt packs, there's a bus bar that runs from here over to that other side. And they're con covered with um, protective caps. And it's just a bus bar that simply connects them together which makes these two packs of 32 volts in series giving them 64 volts. Now what I did was pulled all those bus bars. I had a bunch of welding cable, jumper cables here. So I went ahead and cut everything down with shrink wrap. I took those bus bars and I cut them by hand and made my own wire crimps and wire ties 
um, so that I could put them right back on the batteries in just another form as cable ends. And that worked out great because I didn't have to special order any cables for it. I just needed to rework everything I had here from running it the other way. And so now that that's done, I've been able to run these three in series, which is 30, 30, and 30. Well, it was when I switched it over. Max voltage would be um, 97.76 volts fully charged on those three cells. Now, since these are a 20 amp hour cell, I only got 20 amp hours by running those all in series. But I ran two banks of that. So I've got that 96 or 97.76 volts times two. So I ran this side the same and this side the same. Give me two of those in parallel in the end. So that gives me 40 amp hours at 97.76 volts. Now my, of course my controller is only rated at 90 volts. So I cannot charge this to full capacity. Which is fine because it's absolutely not necessary now that I've got it in this configuration. Um, I can charge the 80% and extend the life of these massively long life batteries anyhow. And it keeps me in my operating temperature, in my operating range, my most efficient operating range as long as possible. So in the end, this may have been a better solution than actually running an actual 72 volt LTO battery just for the simple fact is I'm able to get 40 amp hours here and I can get it right up to 90 volts which is what my um, controller is rated for and if it was just a regular 72 volt LTO battery my max charge voltage would only be roughly 84 volts at full charge so um, Anyhow, that's where I'm at now. I just wanted to update you too, uh, for those who tuned in before, when I had the other throttle assembly on here that was a hack job of getting a e-bike throttle to work as my twist throttle on my one inch bar. It worked, but it was really sketchy, let me tell you. So, what I did is I found a potentiometer pop box throttle that was in the States, roughly 50 something dollars and I gutted it and now I use a mechanical throttle which was the exact same throttle assembly that I had in my SNS that was in my iron before I pulled it out and so now I have an actual mechanical throttle with killer snap killer reaction just like a regular throttle assembly but I did have to rework that so that was a potentiometer I gutted and I put a hall, hall sensor throttle assembly in there and made my own hall sensor pop box throttle assembly. Of course you can't order one out of China and wait for four months after spending $80 but um, if you have interest you want to know how I did that it's pretty simple it works amazing and I have no concerns about it being an issue down the road. But anyhow thanks for watching God bless sorry this was a little long-winded and uh, we'll see you guys soon when the final build takes place. Thank you. Bye.